Hey Christian, I am excited and a little nervous, I'll be honest, to do the response this week, but uh, let's get started. I'm here in the office, by the way, a view that most people normally don't get because the wall that we film Live the Word on is literally on the other side of the camera. But anyway, enough stalling, the questions. Question one, what has God given me to equip me to be his follower? So this question can be deceptively tricky, I think, because it seems like there's often this pressure to put on kind of a mask of humility to not really own or acknowledge the sort of talents that you might have, as if talking about those talents or acknowledging those talents is necessarily prideful. If I was eight feet six inches tall, for instance, I'd objectively be tall, and it wouldn't be prideful necessarily for me to say that unless I not just literally, but figuratively, looked down my nose at other people who weren't that tall. I mean, if I'm going to use the gifts God has given me, I have to identify them, right? So I think I'm pretty smart, I'm pretty curious, I'm a pretty good communicator, I think, and I think I'm a decent team leader, although honestly and lately I've kind of had my doubts about that. So as long as I can just acknowledge that without necessarily being superior or prideful to anybody, I think those are some of the gifts that God has equipped me to follow him. A sharp mind to be able to understand complex things, the ability to communicate them in a clear way to other people, the ability to hopefully get other people to follow Christ as well. At least I hope anyway. Now to question two. Question two, how have I ignored or misused these gifts? Okay, so I was totally going in one direction with this question, and then you clarified it a little bit, and I totally stopped short. You asked, how have I stepped over Lazarus in my own life? And that totally made me rethink my answer to the first question. My initial instinct was to talk about characteristics, right? Just like the rich man would have talked about, would have conceived his riches in terms of the size of his house, or the amount of gold in his coffer. But the rich man's greatest treasure, his true wealth, was the person of Lazarus, not this list of stuff. And that's why I'm ashamed to admit that my first instinct when thinking about the ways that God has blessed me was to think about stuff first rather than the people in my life. Which is really a shame and so stupid because I have such amazing people in my life. They are the ones who inspire me, who comfort me, who shape who I am and my relationship with them. They are the ones that I'm called to serve as a follower of Christ and yet they didn't come to my mind first. I've been so focused on my other gifts, my perceived gifts, my intelligence, my ability to communicate, whatever they may be. I've been so focused on using these things for ministry, for the church, for Christ himself, that I've forgotten the people that Christ has put in my life. I come home tired and grumpy after a long and frustrating day, too irritated and exhausted to give my best self to my wife. I have so many friends that I haven't called or even texted in way too long. And I think that gets me to the third question. Third, how have I repented or failed to repent? As I think you can probably guess by this point, I think I'm realizing that I haven't even begun to repent of my failure to adequately love the people, the true blessings in my life. And sure, I'm coming to this realization as I'm saying it out loud and processing, but only time will tell if this is just me feeling guilty or if this is really the first step towards repentance. So yeah, I definitely need to go to confession because it's been way too long. But I also need to reach out to friends and family that I've lost touch with. I need to be more present for my wife on a daily basis. I need to stop worrying so much, stop trying to do so much with the characteristics that God has given me, and instead spend more time with the characters in the unfolding story of my life. The people, the real people that I'm blessed to know and love and be loved by. Christian, I'm grateful to work with you, to get to do really meaningful and important and Christ-centered stuff with you. And I'm also just grateful to be friends with you, to just be a person with you, a Christian with you, to figure out what God has for me in my life with good friends like you by my side. God willing, you'll see me again on Monday standing in front of that wall, and I'll see you on Thursday.